Welcome. So we are back for another special, special episode today with, uh, I mean, studio friend. Uh, yes. Princess Teach, a uh, legend in her own right, and you know, <laughs> definitely one of the pioneers of the, the jazz scene when it comes to DJing as well in Scotland, Rebecca Vassman. How's it going? Ah, oh, that's nice of you to say. But yeah, um, it's going well, thank you. I had a late start today, as I was just telling you. I, my sleeping pattern has remained as it was when I was DJing until three in the morning. <laughs> no despite, <laughs> no this, uh, when we first had lockdown, it changed and I was waking up really early and being super productive. But I think that has somehow now returned back to like normal. So yeah, my sleep patterns are uh, not the best hours right now. But, and, and do you find then, are you, are you staying up a lot later as well, just because there's no real massive reason to get up? Yeah, I mean, what I've been doing is I've been trying to set myself like a weekly schedule to do things, but in my mind, I know that those targets are kind of movable. So because of the fact I know that there's not strict deadlines and really I've set myself the deadlines, depending on how my frame of mind is, I either stick to the deadlines or I don't. So in a weird way, the deadlines are kind of not deadlines, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. So the same thing has gone with my, my sleep pattern. Um, and it has been, yeah, sometimes I get trapped in seeing something on my like home feed somewhere. And then I get brought into a rabbit hole of weird things, like looking at people's profiles that I don't know or researching something. And it's always at like two in the morning. It's always, my mind must work in a weird way at that time of the morning. There's no so, better yeah. time to do mad research other than <laughs> the late, late hours. Yeah, true. Very true. So, like, obviously, I mean, the thing is, right, from everyone I know that's either comes down the studio or friends or has been a guest or whatever that's involved in the industry, I know myself included and everyone down the studio, like, we had a really big year planned and we had some big, big things. I even personally had some big milestones i was meant to be hosting award shows i was meant to be doing comedy gigs i was i was really going for it this year as was the studio and i know yeah. for yourself so tell us a wee bit about some of the things you did have lined up and sort of how that's impacted you well i think when lockdown happened i was my personal circumstances that i was in france already to start a, a nine-day france tour which was a real milestone for me because I've toured in the past, but it's been off the back of like other brands or off the back of like DJ collectives or something. But this was the first tour off my own back, if you like. And it was really exciting. And um, the super nice like agent guy from France had sorted it all out. And then we were really excited because he was going to come to all the gigs with me. And I got to see my family for a bit before. So I went early before my first gig started, uh, the the first gig date. And yeah, lockdown happened. Within the space of an hour, everything was cancelled. I had no way to pay my rent, no immediate income. Of course, I'd kind of, as we all do in this industry, we kind of live month to month. And I'd kind of used a lot of my money because I was expecting to get paid that day for all the tour dates. And of course, that was all cancelled. So in the space of, yeah, pretty much two hours, I was, you know, living my best life to absolutely not anymore. Um, So yeah, I just, I had to book an emergency flight home and it was getting really scary because we didn't know if they were going to stop the flights because the French president made an announcement to say that all uh, non-essential travel was going to get cancelled. So at that point, we didn't know what essential travel was. We didn't know if that would allow people to go home they'd stopped the public transport or they said they were going to so at that point I thought well my dad doesn't drive there'll be no taxis and there'll be no metro so how do I get to the airport it's two hours away like that could potentially stop me getting home so it was really really anxiety inducing and when I was on that flight home I was glad of course I would have been happy to be stuck with my lovely daddy but yeah of course I needed to come home to be able to sort stuff out really and try to source a way to to continue my rent payments back home and whatnot and I couldn't do any of that if I was in France I mean you know you can't claim benefits or anything if you're in another country and whatnot so yeah it was just it was quite a scary time and I'm glad that things have progressed a little bit 
See, I'm, I'm like, okay. I, I put myself in your shoes there, and I think, you know, like you're, you're half French, I'm half Italian, and I just think of like how good I would feel if I knew I was having a tour of Italy. Like, if I yeah. knew I was doing my own tour and it was back in the homeland, like that is the most probably the most exciting thing I, w- I could ever do. And it's, yeah. I'm totally gutted for you because it's like it was back in France. It was like you know connecting yeah. with the heritage, but doing it in your own style. But again, it's like we are all in the same boat. Your health, yeah. that your health's the main thing. But I do yeah. remember that because it was quite worrying at the time. Because I remember when you were there and you were like, I don't know if I'm going to get a flight back. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be stuck here, and it's just it's just crazy, unprecedented times, you know. And it does take its toll on the mental health, as does the industry already. Never yeah, mind. for sure. Never yeah, mind. yeah, absolutely. I think that, like, what I've noticed is that there's been a lot more time to have like headspace, which normally you long for that. But and it's been amazing. But a lot of realizations have happened for me and I'm sure for a lot of other people as well. I mean, a lot of people will still be working from home, so they maybe might not have as much extra time, but for people like us in our industry, obviously we teach with the studio, but that's just not possible right now. And some people are still teaching online, but there's problems with that as well. So, you know, that's kind of not to this, up to this point possible. And yeah, so pretty much we've just had all our work wiped and all our social interaction wiped, and a lot of our career path is based, based on <laughs> is based on being around lots of people at the one time. So it's quite strange, and yeah, there's just been a lot of time for self reflection, a lot of time for thinking, a lot of time for how things are going to change moving forward in regards to like what's important. So for me, I've realised that I don't have a a very what a healthy enough work-life balance so I need to make more time for my friends and family and as much as I'm quite dedicated to my career I think that needs to have more of a balance I think I need to take care of myself better in many different ways and respect myself better so believe in myself a bit more and stuff and that's all easy to say in in, in reflection but whether that can be put into practice once life goes back to normal who knows but yeah I am hoping because like that is the thing when you have this time to ponder like most of the time once you get past the superficial things and the nonsense you start going that little bit deeper in and start going what am I doing with my time most of the time and what value yeah. I'm bringing or what you know what am I learning because so many people just waste time and there literally is so many time there's only so much you know enough time in the day that you can watch Netflix but after a while it's going to, you know, your brain's going to start playing games in terms of, I'm a bit bored, yeah. what else can I do? So hopefully it sparks a new initiative in people to maybe take up a new hobby or, or look after yeah. health more or whatever. But it is, that is the worrying time because when you're stuck in your head and like most creative people, we beat yeah. ourselves up, we second guess everything. And, we, you know, to be honest, all the chats with all our guests have been similar stuff. Just everybody's in this same boat. Like, yeah. You know, so music wise then, music wise, because I know, right, I mean, you know, the last we, you know, couple of years is really starting to really, you're starting to make some nice ruffling yeah. feathers and the whole worldwide FM stuff's really starting to pop off where you're getting a, a monthly show on there, which is awesome. You know, you've obviously had some amazing guests and stuff as well. So talk us a wee bit about that, because hopefully with that platform, you can still kind of keep that going even during this. So Yeah, well, one of the really positive things about the lockdown experience happening is that I have been able to keep up with the radio shows because I, I'm lucky enough to have still have a sound card and a mic and a laptop which by the way I nearly didn't have a laptop you nearly did. <laughs> we'll get to that <laughs> I, I spilled coffee over my laptop and for about a week and a half it was unsure whether I would get it back and of course I'm not earning right now no, no one is so buying a brand new laptop right now is not the one not so Got that back. Um, But yeah, so I've been doing a monthly show on Worldwide FM, which is Giles Peterson's radio station. I'm super grateful to have that. We've been hosting bands in my living room, which of course can't happen anymore right now, but I've still got the radio show. So what I'm doing is I'm just remotely organizing guests. So DJs are sending me their guest mixes remotely and um, bands that are able to are recording like little self-filmed live sessions, if you like, to be broadcast out through Worldwide FM. So that's really positive and I feel like continuing to do radio shows 
is a really good thing and it's a really positive and it's the same with the live streams as well i think it's a really positive way of people like djs keeping themselves amused but also keeping people at home amused you know um, and I'm doing a new radio station on a, on a Liverpool station called Melodic Distraction. So I'm actually doing two radio, two radio shows a month now. So that keeps me busy. I'm doing some remix work that I wouldn't have had time to do if I was on the tour. And yeah, there's, there's been loads of positives. It's just, it's just trying to focus on those positives and not let the kind of other things slip into your mind too much. That's the, that's the real battle, I think. It just shows your perspective, though, and like your mind is everything. You know, it's it's how you look, it is how you look yeah. at it. Because the thing is, as well, is not giving in too much to the fear of the situation and everybody yeah. freaking out and stuff like that. So that's that's definitely good to hear because uh, the stuff you've been doing, like with the album and that. So what's happening yeah. with that? Because I know you were close to getting that finished, and I know you've sent me over and I've listened through it, loving it. Very different. It's not at all you know, what people are going to expect. Well, I think they're going to expect it because it's from you, but I mean, in terms yeah. of it being a really sort of modern jazz album, um, yeah. you know, I, I wasn't expecting it to be so jazzy and I was like really quite happy with that, to be honest. That's amazing. Thanks for listening. I appreciate that, by the way. It's very appreciated. Um, I think that, well, yeah, again, this has allowed me to have more time. So the album's finished. I've finished off some remixes that are exciting. So now what I'm trying to focus my time on is concentrating on um, getting the confidence to speak to my friends that run labels that I would be really honoured if they were to even listen to and release. So I've got a couple of phone call meetings scheduled in for next week to discuss the music. I've sent them all the music. So yeah, I'm just just trying to, to create little nuggets of positive news and positive like thoughts that uh, enable me to feel like I'm still moving forward yeah. in this time I guess and hopefully be able to share the music with people because artists releasing new music is number one a way for them to s potentially earn a bit of money and number two it's keeping people with fresh stuff to consume so like music is really what I consider the number one thing in keeping me happy and sane and pretty much everyone I know it keeps it enables people to feel connected because people are maybe listening to this new album that's come out and then they're all discussing it uh, like friends of friends of mine have had like book clubs where they've all ordered books online secondhand or whatever and they've all read them and then they'll do is they'll do like a phone call to discuss it which I think is quite cute so I think for us what's naturally happening in the music world is you know it's like a little book club between everyone and the whole scene and everyone's you know, actually got time to listen to new releases. So in many ways, it's a good time for music to be released right now. Obviously, it's difficult with vinyl and distribution and things like that. But in regards to digital releases and streaming platforms and radio shows, that's thriving and potentially thriving. And there's no reason why that would not get actually stronger right now. So, yeah, I, I, I would agree because people now have that time on their hands to sit and listen to tracks that they normally wouldn't or whatever, or maybe yeah. open that email when they usually they wouldn't. But it's yeah. funny because I've had a couple of conflicting conversations about this and uh, one with a label owner, a uh, friend of ours, who was basically just saying he's struggling so much financially that he's really yeah. not putting any releases out of any other artists on his label apart from himself because he's like, I can't cover the costs. I can't, yeah. I can't get the artist to do the artwork. I can't get the vinyl print. Yeah. I can't, and I'm like, what a crazy time. Because then on the other hand, let's say you release some banger on your own label and you get 10,000 buys. That money there could then prop him up to continue doing it. But it's it's about yeah. heavy and, 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 and again, it's just how you look at it and go, well, some people are going to buy it, some people are not. Because I know in other parts of the industry, there's been record sales of things. There's yeah. been, you know, because everybody's stuck in home, so they're buying online courses, yeah. they're buying equipment, they're buying all this for the people well, that can to. One thing that I have noticed, um, I'm sure you've seen the same thing, is just what, like, many websites are doing the same thing, but Bandcamp, I've done a couple of um, days where they've wavered their fees. And so I released my first single on the last one, which did really well. And for me... That was a bit of a 
turning point in my confidence, like self-confidence with my music making because it was released on a compilation and it sold the best. And all the other artists on the compilation were really well, like known producers. And here's me, just a random person who's just come in. And I think it really shows that right now people have the time to listen to the music. So they're not just going on and going, oh, that's that person. I know their stuff. I'm just going to buy it and that's put it in a exactly folder. It. That's exactly it's it. Too, it's Instead too. of buying the names they know, they wanted to hear something different. Yeah, so it's a good time for that. And I think, but and like the labels have been really supportive. So what they've been doing is kind of doing call outs to all the artists to ask if they've got any unreleased music lying around so they can try and earn them some money. So it kind of feels like this nice thing where everyone's coming together and trying to help each other, but really fundamentally, no one's got any money. And that really, that's what we all need right now. So. I, but I think what it does show is that we are all united by the fact that we're all in the same situation. We're not alone. Everyone's feeling the same way. I've been having a lot of, uh, you know, struggles with my mindset and everyone that I know has been. And it's interesting because one of the friends that I was talking to is one of the people that in my mind has been doing the most in lockdown. It's been constant radio shows and music releases and just loads and loads of things. And when I spoke to them, they said, yeah, I've been really struggling with self-comparison and feeling like I'm not doing anything compared to others. So it's just a nice insight into the fact that this is a massive thing that we're all going through. And one thing that I've kind of been thinking that's interesting is that they will be teaching this in history lessons in schools in a hundred years time. And we are in this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's such a huge thing that we're going through that it's okay for us all to feel this way. And it's okay to have time periods where we're not productive. That's okay. We shouldn't give ourselves a hard time for that. But at the same time, if it helps our mindset to be productive, then that's great, you know? So do you, do you think though, that that is also partly one of the issues of social media, that even someone that like you look up to or are seeing that they are being productive and, oh God, they've still got, all their shit together, they're absolutely fine. And then speaking to them in the background, they're like, oh no, actually I'm really struggling. And it's like, well, on the surface, it looks like, you know, again, we don't need to call out any names then, but I just mean like, yeah. you know, I think that that is partly one of the issues. Why social media is everybody's living their best life or, or whatever, and you're not actually seeing some of the parts of what we all go through. I mean, I've tried to be well, as truthful as I can recently in telling people I've had ups and downs, yeah. bad stuff happened in the family, unfortunately, in the last few weeks. Yeah. So there's ups and downs. There's no point in trying to portray it as perfect, but you could see someone and go, God, because then you're evaluating yourself going, oh, God, I'm really not being that productive. I should be doing more. And then yeah. you can speak to them and they're feeling in the same boat. So there's got to be well, a balance. I think one thing that I learned um, over the course of this time and, and was cemented by the conversation that I had this morning, actually, before we talked to this, per to this person, is that this whole social media and self-comparison thing, it's really your own mindset that's the issue. So, like, if you think about this, right, if you have days where you're feeling really good, and you look online and people are doing well that you fundamentally like and look up to and, and care about. They might be friends, they might not be friends, whatever. You find yourself being buzzing for them. But if you're in a bad mindset, it's not that you're not buzzing for them or that you're not happy. You're you still happy for them. But it makes you then think, oh, I need to do more. But one, th one thing that really is key here is that that is us. We're, we're creating that in our own mind. And yeah. it's just thoughts. and we've got the power to change those thoughts and you know if somebody is being really productive online that is their way of coping with their own struggles so they're not doing that to for other people to see and for them to feel bad they're doing that because they want to stay busy and stay productive plus if we are having a good day and they've done 10 radio shows that we need to catch up on then that's great because we'll have radio shows to listen to so it's it's us it's really within us and it's for us to look at and we've got the time to do that right now. Sorry, I don't mean to sound airy fairy, but like no. right now is a time for us to like fix the way that we feel about ourselves. And it's not because of other people, it's because of us and what we've got going on. Mm -hmm. And this whole social media comparison thing, when it moves over to people being false, then that's a problem. But when it, I feel like right now, this whole false thing, for me anyway, and for people that I follow, it's become much better. So people are 
being realistic, they're posting less, they're saying when they're having a bad time and they're just, you know, doing things to keep themselves busy and that's great. So me personally, I think that that's got a lot better and all of these, you know, Instagram influencers and stuff, they're limited to being in their house just like everyone else. Um, and so everyone's kind of made a bit more like equal right now in a way. Yes, yes. That's so, true. That, that is true. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all good points what you're saying because ultimately the control always comes down to us and how we look at it. It's what we were yeah. saying earlier. It's, it is about the perspective, but we are breeding such a culture of like connecting yeah. each other. It's why yeah. we're having so many issues with mental health and people feeling yeah. inadequate because they're like, oh, maybe I'm not doing enough. So if it makes you strive to do something better with your life, great. But yeah. nine times out of ten, it's just making people sit and feel bad about themselves. You know, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I do also agree though that it's starting to become more transparent in terms of people kind of sharing their pitfalls yeah. and things that are happening, but it is still this sort of glossy sheen. But that's funny though, Instagrammers that are kind of sat in the house, what are you going to Instagram now? You know what I mean? It's like it is putting everybody in the same sort of boat and making us <laughs> realize really like who are the yeah. important people in society and who we should be yeah. looking up to. You know what I mean? And one thing, I, one thing I've noticed, which I'm sure the rest of the world has noticed as well, the celebrities and, cele and even internet celebrities, the big influencers with millions of followers, the, the actual pop stars, where are they right now? Where are they in regards to helping with all the money they have? Where are they? They're singing John Lennon, remember? Imagine all. Oh, like, remember they were all singing that? It's yeah. like, hope he wants to hear me singing that. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's one of the main positives that I think, and I'm sure everyone feels the same, is that this whole equality thing. So like the heroes of today and right now currently are obviously nurses and doctors, and but, but more importantly, bin men, cleaners, pe the woman who works in your local corner shop. You wouldn't, be able to get, you wouldn't be able to get your bread and toilet roll if she wasn't risking her life every day to sell you those things. Yeah. Um, and I think, I really hope that continues after this all stops. I really hope that people start to see that no one is better or worse than anyone else. And it doesn't matter how much money you earn or what status you are in your job. That bin man is as, as, as important as the big shot lawyer or the music exec for a label or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, their job is just as important because all of these people are every day anyway, keeping... Mm -hmm all the countries all over the world like running, you know? Imagine imagine there was no bin men ever again. What would happen? You know? know. It's like but it is it's as simple as that though. Like like we things that actually make such a huge difference and hopefully it does make people realise actually what is important and and like, you know, treating people with respect. But I think overall, like I mean most of the times when we do these chats it's like it's industry advice, but that's just life advice in general. Like treat everybody with respect, man. And yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter what level they're at. It's like shake the janitor's hand the same way you would the CEO. Exactly. It's just, it, I it, and I think for any of the music and not you know fans and followers listening to the page, well, it's one of the things they're all up and comers or they're established yeah. or whatever. It's like treat the A and R with so much respect. Treat the yeah. owner. Treat the the DJ that's just been signed or, or whatever, because you never know as well who these people might become. Yeah. I'll give you a prime example of, you know, that's a really good piece of advice for anyone that wants to get into the music industry is that, you know, this whole perception that some people are, are more important than others, you know, as a basic life principle is fundamentally wrong. And I've seen quite a lot of people start to kind of rise up and develop, I guess, a, a, a bad attitude or, a set, or, a, or an inflated ego. And people don't take to it well. So they don't want to work with them and it does actually ruin things for them. So don't do that guys. And I think that in regards to like what people can do just now, well, there's a, there's an actual whole world out there of like learning materials and things that you can do and YouTube channels. And what I've seen is Ableton on their Instagram page. Um, I think they do this all the time anyway, but I just started following them. So I saw it through you guys actually Ableton released that, PDF book for free so and a lot of the plug-in companies and um, software companies and learning companies are heavily discounting and they're making their free trials longer so 
really right now is a really good time to learn new skills. Yeah. So if that transfers into music or someone who wants to get into the industry, then right now is a great time, especially for learning music production software, because it essentially takes a long time. And yeah, right now is a great time. And I've done that myself. I've learned new things as well. So yeah, yeah no, I'm the same. I'm the same. Trying to stay busy, been working on music and, and writing stuff. Yeah some sketch ideas and things i think that's that is a really important point for people because again there's only so much netflix you can watch there's only so yeah. much youtube binging you can do and again yeah. quite good to try and develop a new skill plus it's one of these ones i think most people will probably feel like we've bit better about themselves if they leave lockdown having learned something new or yeah. at least having started something i mean i was speaking to one friend he says he's never done so much exercise in his life and he's stuck in so it's, that's awesome it's, I know it's weird, so it's also giving people an incentive to go out more than often because it's it's now a treat to go out. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's it. Gigs wise, music. Would when do you think we're when's any sort of normality coming back? When can we have a party together again? I really hope that we can have a party soon, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't really want to get into trying to guess because really right now it's a guessing game so I think the best that people can do is concentrate on not trying to think about when it's all going to go back to normal because it drives you mental yeah. and yeah just staying positive and learning new things even even if people are feeling quite down or having a hard week which I've had the last few weeks Many. just small small things really small things like a tiny achievement and what I've found like cleaning my house even if I can't be motivated that day to do music, if I've cleaned my house and it's all nice for the next day, then the next day I might feel more motivated. But again, it's not giving yourself a hard time if you do have, you know, a bad week. That's fine. See, so, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's learning that, though, and trying to unlearn it. And it's actually about being self-aware in that moment, though. Yeah. Because, again, it's all good and saying it, but then there's times I find I'm, I know all this, as do you, because you're talking about it, and then you I can't exercise it, yeah. To it. Yeah, and exactly, like, yeah. And the thing is, as well, one of the things we spoke about with Davey Forbes and, and some of the guys, it's like, what, what's really, really difficult is to keep momentum going when your mind's maybe thinking about money, or you're yeah. sitting stressing out. You're not going yeah. to be that creative when you're sitting thinking about, Christ, how am I going to pay the next bill? Or, yeah. You know, whether whether it's that severe or whether it's just even just thinking about the whole pandemic in general and getting swarmed up with things, it's like, it's quite hard to then go in and go, right, positively, let's create. And again, it's about not beating yourself up too much if you don't that day. Yeah, exactly. And I think like one thing to remember that someone once told me this, and I always try to think this, and it, it, to be fair, it doesn't, it sometimes doesn't help, but it might help some others. And it's like this phrase that says, money is just money and it, it comes and goes and it's kind of true because if you think about your financial situation throughout your life it really does just come and go and it does reflect upon how hard you're working so if people are managing to motivate themselves at least a little bit then once this all finishes they'll have the tools there to really go at it and catch up with them catch up with themselves and put their new skills into action and and if people don't do that and the main struggle is i guess in a way survival um, feeding themselves and staying mentally healthy then that's great too because surviving something like this is staying healthy is number one I guess but yeah totally, totally. so like I mean we've I mean uh, we've, we've had a nice chat it's been it's been really good like just kind of chatting about all this sort of the weirdness of what's going on and it's yeah. funny because like we're, we're friends as well you know yeah. you helped in the studio and I can't wait till we're actually back in amongst working with the schools and inspiring oh, I know. young people as well which obviously right now is a bit of a minefield of everything that's going on so we're waiting to hear back which you know we'll, we'll certainly let you know when all that kind of kicks back off but one of the I miss you guys I know I know it's, it's it's been it's been crazy at least we can do these virtual parties or whatever yeah but yeah, yeah. one thing I've asked uh, every everybody we've had on, um, so I'm going to ask yourself as well, can you, while we're on lockdown and people are looking for stuff to consume or watch, what musicians or DJ sets or music video or artists or something that you could put people onto maybe they've never heard of? Well, I have been keeping very kept positive by Giles Peterson, who's doing a lot of really positive and quite happy radio shows through worldwide fm 
so to check out Worldwide FM. And also there's another channel called The Vinyl Factory that are doing on Instagram like live stream videos of DJs in their home. And it's really interesting because like one week it will be one thing, next week it will be another thing. So no matter what your taste in music is within certain reasons, you will probably enjoy that. And it's quite interesting because you get to see inside DJs' homes and they're just there drinking their cup of tea in their living room. So those things might be channels they've not heard of because they're not necessarily so well known. So oh. the Vinyl Factory, Worldwide FM, Giles Peterson, go check those out. Class, 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 and definitely, and everybody's recommendations have been different, which is awesome as well, so that's definitely, I know for a fact, that'll be good stuff, so, right, yeah. well, a uh, massive thanks to Rebecca Vassman for joining us today for another episode, we'll, we'll do another one in studio when we're allowed back in, and yeah. I'm going thanks, thanks so much for, for joining me today. Thanks for having me, and I'm sending you lots of love, and everyone. Okay, until next time, Trips. Thank you. Cheers, Rebecca. Thanks. <laughs>